So first one is science data from the surface of the moon. And I'm trying to land Guzbur because I'm just like that. Okay, here we go. I know what I'm doing. Well, I jump from version to version so often that I might not. I, I won't claim too much. Here we go. Skipper has a lot of gimbling on this, so... Okay, I'm hoping the gimbling on the skipper is going to help me out here. Drag is horrible. I always seem to end up a little bit south of east on these launches. I don't know if it's entirely due to drag either. There might be some differential drag, but... Uh, okay, let's not try and go too far east right now. I can fix this higher in orbit. Just love the way the fairings expand in the VAB so you can see... Yes. Yeah. That's the one big plus uh, when it comes to the stock fairings over procedural fairings. Because you don't have to remove the fairings in order to see what's under them. And of course when making videos and trying to show people what you've got I hate having to remove the fairings all the time. You said don't go over 300 meter seconds, not 30. Uh, okay. I have my launch profile pretty... I mean, I've, I've got a launch profile here. It's uh, This is a new rocket, so it probably shouldn't have gone with that profile, but... Uh, I don't think we did too badly. I go by altitude at uh, certain pitches, not speeds at certain pitches, but that's because I generally build rockets with very similar uh, thrust weight ratios. If I vary the thrust weight ratio a lot, I'd probably go with speed at various pitches, but I don't have to do that. Okay, well we've got an 80 kilometer apoapsis. I'm going to separate and get this stage ready. And I think we can start out. You went to Elo Elu in your stream today. Well, I hope to get there soon. <laughs> At some point, I'll have to. Did you do that with a Kerbal or with a uh, probe? The soil panels are useless there. Yeah, they they fixed that particular issue. I've heard that the solar panels were still working out at uh, great distances from the sun. Yeah, no more of that. Okay, we are all set to transfer to the moon. Got a bit of an inclination still. Bioelectric transfers are efficient depending on the ratio, the, the actual, uh, the ratio of the orbits. The ratio of the transfer orbit to your target orbit. So, sort of depends on how far out you want to go with that. You've uploaded a bunch of your designs on Kerbal X. Dreslander worked perfectly from the first try. I have uploaded precisely one thing to Kerbal X, unfortunately. Uh, just the GBN is on Kerbal X right now. Dreslander worked perfectly. Well, I've been to. Well, I haven't been to Dres in 1.0 yet, but I've been to Dres many a time. Target orbit is. Oh, you know, you've got the ratio right. Uh. Yeah, target orbit is 11.97 times smaller or larger than your current orbit. Then you use bioelectric, right? Yes, but I didn't know the. I knew it was something above 10 or so. Any less than that, and you're a bit off of Fulman. Yep, that's what I know. But uh, I just go with Fulman transfers. Even Dev said no way goes to dress. Well, I just in my uh, hard time series, I just did a dress. But what the heck am what? 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 Hey, 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 hey. I just looked away and suddenly this thing is drifting. Who's my pilot? Guzber! Guzber, hello. Okay, well, we've got a moon encounter. Okay, that's the wrong way. 
Okay, well, that's good enough. Weird inclination, but that's because we've still got an inclination going in, so I should be happy with 100 kilometers, actually. Okay, so... Guzber, you don't seem to be able to handle this crap very well, but uh, we're, we're taking you over there anyway. I guess pretty dull. So, so you actually aim for plants based on their looks? They should spruce up some planets then. Uh, or moons, I should know. Plants or moons. Ike is very similar to the moon. Then again, so is Drez, somewhat. Yeah. Drez feels a lot like the moon. Okay, I don't like this inclination here. Um, let's fix that. Okay, I don't need to correct any more than that. Okay, I just don't want to be a very weird place when I want to transfer back to Kerbin. Okay, so on to Periapsis. Okay, I think that's the end of that stage, is it? Yep. Okay, now it's the lander stage. Oh, I have to activate the engine. Probably should have dumped more ablator off of the heat shield. Okay, I guess while we're in orbit, we should have Guzber do some EVAs, huh? Okay, Guzber, do not mess around with me. He's messing around with me. Stabilize. Keep stable. Okay, sneak down there. EV report. Ah. We're still high. Okay. Well, crew port has already been done high of the moon, too. Okay, well, um, I guess we'll wait until he gets back up. Let's make a descent orbit. Okay. Now I have to save enough fuel to get to orbit again, and of course get back to Kerbin. Thankfully, this thing has a lot of thrust to weight ratio. Especially with regard to the moon. I believe this is the... is this the one? Oh, we're over shooting. We're actually aiming for that one now. Hold on. Emergency stop. This is not efficient, by the way. Before anybody tells me that this is not an efficient approach, this is not an efficient approach. I was wanting to hit this crater, so. You've seen worse? What's worse than killing all of your horizontal velocity first and then killing your vertical? I mean... Well, okay, uh, I guess I could imagine something, but... <laughs> like a crash. Crashing would be a worse approach. Guzbird, don't crash. That would be very bad. I can barely see the instruments. Okay, this is not going to help me much. Yes, I'd like the radar altimeter outside of IV as well. I'd like, you know, apoapsis and periapsis here too. Where is my shadow? Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, hmm, this is a bit of a problem. Can you tell me why it's a bit of a problem? If you said, when I turn off SAS, this is going to tip over, you'd be correct. <laughs> well, that at least fulfilled the contract. I want to get your thoughts. This is this is probably bad if I try and take Guzber out, right? I haven't tried this in 1.0. Lock the suspension. Okay, are we now thinking that I can... Do I have enough juice to take off and land and more level ground? 
I guess over here would be level, but no, I don't think so. I don't think so, Atomic. Um, let me check. Okay, 345 is the ISP. I get 1,207. Taking off and landing again would be... I mean, I don't know how much... I, I can't really tell you how much Delta V that would take. It depends how cautious I am. If SAS isn't eating up electric charge, it means it's not being used. Should be fine to EV. Good point. Well, unfortunately, it is using electric charge. It's using 0 0.03. I, I don't know if you can see that. You can see a drain on electricity from SAS. It isn't very large, so it should be fine. Okay, so I'm getting the feeling that we, we can try and uh, pop out here. Okay. EVA report. Oh, okay, we've done that, huh? Now, uh, Gusbury, you're going to have to try and not knock your pod over. I know this is hard for Kerbals. Watch the landing strut. Okay, EV report. Start to say something dramatic about and poignant about the plight of Kerbal kind in this grand universe only to be cut off by random radio chatter that the situation is nominal. Keep data. Well, plant a flag. You're going to get a lot of experience for that, I think. Uh, Guzber on the moon. And the date. And, uh, well, first Kerbal landing on a extra urban body. Okay. Probably would be best to only lock the struts that are on the downslope. So far so good. Now just not to drop kick it on the way back in. Yeah, I know. And not drop kick it. Uh, actually rocket it but with the EVA pack, right? Okay, here we go. And you know how much I love doing EVAs. And B is for board now, let's remember. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Board. Okay, SAS back on. Okay, I think we're, 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 we're done. We better go now before the game decides to do something horrible to me. Okay, Gusper, up. And 90 degrees, please. Gear up. Okay, well, thank you for all the advice. I think it helped. Especially locking the struts, of course. That That's actually a feature that uh, got introduced at a certain point, and I've never gotten into using it. Not very well, anyway. Yeah, I, I hate going to map view to see the apoapsis and periapsis. That is my number one thing I wish they had done. Was to put those on the main view so I wouldn't have to switch to this. And if, you know, they're afraid of weirding people out because uh, people might be put off by the words apoapsis and periapsis. They can call it whatever they like. Yeah, I know Kerbal Engineer. Well, of course I know Kerbal Engineer. I know all the mods, basically. But, uh, um... We're talking about stock here. We're talking about stock. If you really think that uh, people don't want it there, you can you can make it an option. Make it an option. I'm going to bet most people will turn that op option on. Okay, here we go. Back for Kerbin. You did an Apollo-style mission to the moon entirely from EVA once. Had to use Kerbal Engineer and the docking port UI by Navy Fish. Yes. Yeah, the docking, well, if you got to do it from IVA, yeah. I usually have to turn the camera this way and that constantly in order to do a docking. Uh, because I don't use the docking port UI by Navy Fish. And the reason I don't use it is because I never figured out how to use it. I have many series on YouTube. So you can go down right below the video, you'll see YouTube videos. Uh, a link to my YouTube videos 
and I've got like 500 videos in. Some of them have uh, MechJeb installed. Uh, I have used Kerbal Engineer in my beta tutorial series. So yeah, I have used such things, but this is a stock series or stock stream right now. So I'm not using Kerbal Engineer. I've got a calculator beside me, basically. Okay. There's Kerbin. Let's go back. I wonder if the landing struts will be alright with the re-entry heating. We're about to find out. There's just an arrow baking pass, of course. Do you think Gusbro will be handle be able to handle retrograde? Hmm. No punch has been updated to 1.0.2. Now just waiting on KW rocketry and realism overhaul, and you'll be set. Yeah, and FASA I think has been upgraded, right? I thought I saw that. Oh, landing struts are also iffy, but I think we are going up, so they're they'll be cooling off. Yeah, indeed, FASA has. FASA has the most photogenic engines. And of course, they have the real plumes from Realism Overhaul configured for them. Though I think uh, Realism Overhaul has uh, configured real plumes for a lot more now. Originally, they only had for the stock engines and FASA, so. Okay, well, that brought us down a little bit. I don't have enough fuel to mess around with this. So I'm just going to... I don't know. I'm always worried about the mountains, of course. But I think I'm just going to have to uh, take what it gives me. So yeah, I am hoping to get to bigger and better things soon. I think this mission and the next mission will help me... We'll see. I think they'll help me unlock the BAB. I'm not too sure if they'll sum up to the right amount. Okay, well, I think we can dump the service module now. So I'm gonna get rid of the service module. Okay, let's not time warp through the flame effects. You know, that could cause problems. Nova Punch and KW Rocketry. Really, the part mods shouldn't have had too much trouble. Well, they might have had to adjust their ISPs to fit in with the new ISPs for the engines. I wonder what they look like now then, if they've uh, readjusted their ISPs to fit the new way things are. Okay, now I, I want the temperature overlay because I can't see it very well. SAS can turn off. I can't see what terrain we're over. Well, it's pretty much the only use of temperature overlay I've been doing so far. I really... I, I don't fear re-entry heating in, in this version. I feared it more in 1.0 than in 1.0.2. Just don't think it's as big a threat now. Because of drag. Because the drag is increased, it slows you down faster. If it slows you down faster, you're going to get less heating. I burned off 24 units. 24 units, Zillatomic. I mean, in 1.0, I would have burned a lot more off. Looks like we're on lowlands. What setting are you using on the re-entry heating? Whatever the default is for uh, hard. Is there a... Uh, I don't know. I didn't even look at the settings in the default. I just went with it. Okay, so Gusber Kerman was successful. He got 37.2 signs back. We weren't too far from far from the KSC. We got 2,000 funds back, and he got three experience. Let's time warp to the next morning. So now we've got this other contract, and let me see how much it's worth. So that's about a hundred thousand funds. I think unlocking this takes four, yeah, four hundred fifty thousand. So we'll need at least one more contract. Oh, now we get, now we get planet flag on the moon. Well, we know we can do that. 
We know we can do this one too. But but the next thing we need to do is return to Kerbin from orbit of Minmus. I'll pla uh, I'll pick this up uh, now anyway. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I I guess so. But we're doing the Minmus one now. So I think this will be the last mission of the day. We'll uh, get into orbit around Minmus. We'll have the Kerbal who does it do a bunch of EVAs to get science, and then we'll bring the Kerbal back. Okay. So what are your thoughts on? Oh, uh, whenever I turn on the heat overlay, it has this effect in the VAB. Let's see. Uh, physics, thermal. Here, radiation factor 1, conduction 10, convection 40, aero heating production 1. I guess we could use the debug toolbar to up it quite a lot if we want to. But I don't know what... I mean, of course I'm saying I'm playing hard career mode, so I'm just going to keep it to what hard career mode is, I think. Otherwise people will be confused. Hard as 100%, yeah. You use 120 Okay. Substantially harder? Well, what can I say about that? You're making... make me feel inferior here, Justin. Come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've done thermometer readings. We've done goo around Minmus now. Right? Yeah, I mean we have. We took this thing. We don't have any new science except for EVAs. Okay, well, let's just take this out, and the Kerbal that we haven't sent, Sidri, will be up this time. Okay, here we go. Now, this is where I would like to know what the, what you might call it, um, terminal velocity is at different altitudes. When I actually have to throttle down the engines like this. I don't know if I'm throttling them down too much or too little. Probably too much, but can't be sure. Okay. Uh, everyone on the forum is saying that you should ignore terminal velocity. Uh, well, if it's high enough, yes. If it is, if uh, Jake, you're saying it's 530 in the low atmosphere, if it's that high, then yeah. If if it's not oh 430 well when you say low atmosphere what altitude do you mean yeah I mean uh, if it's very high then yes of course you can ignore it but if it's very if it's still re sort of low then that's a different story but this right here this was a very good ascent profile that we did okay uh, this is not a very good ascent hold on I misjudged where my apoapsis was. Yeah, 8,000 is still high. Uh, I, I need to know where it is, like at 1,000 kind of thing. If it's 430 meters per second at 8,000, I'd say that that's still relevant. You still have to worry about terminal velocity then. Because it's easily... You could get faster than 430 meters per second by 8,000 meters. I mean, that's not that hard. From what you're seeing, everybody is basing their ascent on the G-force. Thrust to weight ratio, G-force, same thing. Yes, uh, that's, that's a very important part of it, yeah. They are saying to stay at 2 Gs. No. <laughs> no, I can tell you that that is not correct. No. Interesting idea. Uh, it won't 
it won't do too bad. It won't have too bad a result. But it's not optimal, no. I've created a sort of interesting situation for myself. I think I can just burn for the moon straight. I don't need to even get into full orbit here. Let's just... Yeah, well, there's the moon. Um, yeah, I think I can make a moon of transit right now. You mean a bit low. Um, it's a bit high when you're low, and it's a bit low when you're high. Um, technically... Oh, I, I'm, why am I making a moon of transit? Darn it. Uh, I'm supposed to be making a Mimus transit. Ah, uh, I messed that up. Okay. Right. Right. Uh, don't, no, no, not start at 2. 2 is a little bit fast. Well, I don't know about the new aerodynamics, though. I still think it's too fast. Um, highest I go is 1. Uh, yeah, 1.6. 1.6. Okay, now we need to get rid of this stage. Let's keep it a little bit closer. Not as much as I can adjust inclination from here. Okay. So we'll have to wait until the ascending node to find out if we can really hit it properly. Okay, well, we just need to get into orbit around Minmus. Uh, I think this will be a fine pass. Bad launch window, yeah. But uh, we're okay. Looks like we're going to be in a polar orbit, which, which suits me fine, actually, if we're going to hit a lot of biomes. Well... Actually, I don't want to be completely polar. It might be hard to get back out into curve and orbit. Let's moderate it a little bit. Okay, so... Uh... Okay, now it should be low. You can EVA, way EVA all the way to the surface and back. Uh, I, I don't want to put my Kerbals at risk, though, Donegan. Uh, have you ever done a free return trajectory flyby of the moon? Yes. Yes, I have. I've even done one of the of Earth's moon in real solar system. So yes, done that. In fact, you can see my Apollo 13 tribute where I did that with Earth's moon in the Saturn V. Okay, here we go for orbit. But we won't get the contract fulfilled until we actually bring our Kerbal back. And we want a tight orbit so that we can hit those biomes properly. You got to meet the Apollo 13 astronauts a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I saw there was an event. They had a reunion at the your in, your, your university. Lovell and Hayes. Yeah, I uh, somebody was tweeting uh, stuff from from their little. Uh, they they were they had an event. Yeah. So that was at your university, huh? Yeah, they had a lot of people there. It wasn't just Lovell and Hayes, was it? It was uh, they. They had other people uh, significant to the mission there as well, if I recall. Okay, I want to get the pod in sunlight. Sidri looks a little bit too concerned to be EVAing, but I'm gonna send him out anyway. Gene Krantz, yeah, Gene Krantz is there. Always good. Okay, uh, 19.2 science, great flats. Okay, I'm gonna have to remember which biomes we do, otherwise, I'm gonna hit, try and hit them more than once. So that's great flats over there. Yeah, I could keep them out there, but I don't like to because they, they, they're bound to do something horrible if I do. I wanna get slopes at some point. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Soon, soon we'll be doing the hopping on Minmus missions where we gather science like anything. That will have to happen. 
Greater Flats. Oh, well, we really did Greater Flats. Or... Or did we? Thought it was, wasn't it Greater... Oh, no, those... Whatever. So, what did you think of the astronauts, Justin? I mean, I have not met an astronaut at all. Highlands. You've wanted to meet them since you were four. That, well, in that case, that's really something. Yeah. Oh, that's when the movie came out. Right, right, right. Even though it's so long ago, they said they can remember it like it was yesterday. Well, <laughs> there are events in your life that you'll remember for forever. That's for sure. And I, I imagine that would be the one for them. That and probably getting married, I guess. Yeah, something that sticks with you. Can't hear the stream. That doesn't sound good. Everybody else hearing the stream all right? I say as if anybody who can't hear the stream will know what I'm saying. Well, I'll have to wait until I can type. Still working on my Twitch settings, of course. I'm hoping that I can stream at a higher bitrate than I am now. Now is not great at all. At least it's stable, it seems. But it's about a fifth of what I normally produce my videos at, so it's not... Uh-oh. Okay. Ah, Kerbal trying to mess with me. Okay, 35 kilometers. Alright, thanks for the feedback. Uh, looks like the sound is okay. How long have I streamed today? Uh, approximately 2 hours and 19 minutes. You like to have very circular orbits, but that makes... <laughs> Apoapsis and periapsis do the dance of death. Yeah, I've seen that one, but not very often since I don't particularly care for circular orbits unless I'm doing re-entry testing. The only time I do like to have very circular orbits is when I'm trying to test re-entries. Oh, fine. Beat me on the precision. We'll have to get an atomic clock out to see how long I've been up. All right. You're joking about my level of precision. Well, I just looked at the clock size 619 and went, well, I started about 4 and then that's it. Yeah. Come on. We're in, cur well, we're doing rocket science here. Come on. That's not precision. Most people say, eh, two hours. Rocket science. Got a contract to rescue a Kerbal on the surface of the moon, but you have a problem landing at the exact place of the moon. Any advice? Yeah. Uh, first of all, you have to make sure that your orbit has an inclination that will at least, of course, cover that location, that latitude. Rover is going a little far. Um, then you just have to uh, make sure you're overshooting, right? Uh, as you descend, make sure you're overshooting. Like uh, earlier, or you could just descend straight down, of course. Uh, you could kill your horizontal velocity as soon as you're over your target and then land straight down, but then you're, uh, you have to get within, what, 2 kilometers, or is it now 20? Uh, to take control of the Kerbal. I don't know how, f how far away you can be to take control over the Kerbal. It shouldn't take that... I mean, uh, you shouldn't be... You talk about 2 kilometers, it shouldn't be too bad in terms of how long it'll take. I mean, on, in my colonization series, I land stuff within like a hundred meters, so two kilometers should be doable. Like to set the Kerbal as your target and watch the relative position and relative velocity. Yeah? A relative position. Well, I mean, I guess you mean in the map view. You just mean the pink target vector. Okay. Yeah, pink target vector is... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I probably do most of my work in map view. You had a bug where the Kerbal that uh, you needed to rescue was unable to move. His legs were about 20 feet above his head. Well, 
Well, in that case, you're doomed, right? You can't do that. Uh, I don't know how you're gonna rescue a Kerbal like that in quicksand. That's not good. We're just going around and error breaking again. Probably, probably just coming straight down after this. I don't think I need my service module. Yeah, I think I can dump the service module. Well, except Sidri has a heck of a time trying to keep this on retrograde when I've dumped it. That's not good, Sidri. You're going to have to work on that. Here. Uh, yeah, I, I got the paddleboard test. I, I've seen it a couple of times. I mean, it doesn't take very long to see it a couple of times. Those, I'll tell you, those little Super Dracos, I, I love those things. Um, they're essential to my Mars missions uh, that I want to do. I want to convert those little Super Dracos, I don't think it's possible in real life, but to methane, liquid oxygen burning little Super Dracos. And then they'll be great uh, for, uh, for a uh, Mars landing. At least I think so. I think they'll, they're, they're just a really good engine because they can throttle, they can, uh, they, they're very lightweight, they have a lot of thrust. But I don't know if they're convertible to methane and liquid oxygen. I probably doubt it. So, but uh, yeah, they are integral to some of my more out there designs. Yeah, they're hypergolic ignition, Chris. But that doesn't keep me from dreaming. <laughs> uh, right now, there's only one engine I know that's uh, really ready for methane oxygen. Of course, uh, there's the Blue Origin stuff. Blue Origin's got their methane and oxygen. Uh, and then the RL-10 in its cryogenic, uh, common extensible cryogenic thing. So those are my two options. The problem with the common extensible cryogenic is that it's big. It's a big engine. And I wanted a little convenient real engine. I'll probably eventually go with uh, RL-10. Pretty much similar chamber pressures as uh, as uh, monomethyl hydrazine and N two O four. Yeah, and of course we could just uh, we could dump some performance in it in order to get the chamber pressure down. They'd have to work out a totally different ignition system. Yep, and uh, probably a totally different fuel feed system too, right? Because, I mean, these are very different fuels. I imagine they'd have to be treated differently. So glad we're really starting to get to the future. Tell me about it, Justin. Yes, it is. Uh, we, we're, we're going over some rough terrain here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, uh, things are getting exciting again. Okay, past the hills. Past the hills, little Sidri. We need another big space push. Uh, we need a sustained space push. Uh, the problem with a big space push is that people tend to get tired too quickly, it seems. We've been in a stall for 20 years, as Chris said, but the problem is if you try and lump things together and just push it all together, it doesn't get sustained and then you never get anywhere with it. It's like uh, it doesn't lead to anything. Okay, uh, no reason someone like SpaceX couldn't could have jumped a challenge. Oh, couldn't have, yeah. Um, I don't know, there seem to be some reasons, but I guess to some extent you have to credit Elon Musk for being sort of a special guy. So, I don't think people, I don't think just anybody could have replicated what he did. Problem with this shuttle is it didn't have a row building stations and refueling, refueling interplanetary Nerva shuttles. Yeah, Nerva. Nerva was a thing. Uh, th there were two things, right? Th there were some sort of way of getting things to lunar orbit. Uh, uh, you know, just uh, something refuelable that could get things to lunar orbit. And then uh, that could have been Nerva as well. But Nerva, the nuclear engine, that was... That was the big hurt, not having that. And, you know, the, the Saturn program was planning to use NERVA, 
and we would continue to have Saturn if we had developed the Nerva engine further. Okay, so we have 88.8 .8 science, uh, 1,200 funds because, again, far away from the KSC. Sidri got 4 ex experience, so that's good. Okay, well, we can, we can look at the tech tree again. And yeah, nuclear, they freak out, especially after, uh, you know, Three Mile Island and all that. You know how hard it is to launch an RTG? We don't even have many RTGs now. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's hard to even get an RTG together, isn't it? Uh, we don't have enough plutonium to put into RTGs. They scramble for that stuff. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, we're in a good situation now. I think we're one mission away or maybe one or two missions away from unlocking and getting more than 30 parts. Uh, we have science that I can upgrade. Uh, I can get uh, more technology with. I think I'll leave it here, guys, because uh, this is the next point where we'll have a big leap. Probably the next thing is to fla uh, plant a flag on the moon. That'll be enough to unlock the VAB. Uh, you know what? And we'll get the plant a flag on Minmus. So we'll have both of these, and so next time I stream, we'll be planting some flags and getting that sort of thing done. And then once we unlock the VAB, I think I'm pretty much set. I mean, I guess the tracking station will be another, th not tracking station, the mission control will be another thing, but that's about it. All right, so I'm planning to stream on the weekend. I'm also thinking about whether to do some realism overhaul on stream at some point. So yeah. Uh, expect uh, Saturday 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, uh, so that's 8 p.m. GMT. Alright, so uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the stream, please follow, and I will see you later.